Ladies and, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Let's continue with chapter four, uh, which is on transient heat conduction. We are at the end of the chapter. We're going to do one uh, last example. And uh, the chapter in general, we've looked at lump systems, which was a very simple approach to get a temperature in a body. However, the limitation of that approach was that you couldn't get the temperature differences in bodies. An example that we're going to do today is going to show temperature gradients. So if you solve a temperature with a lump system approach, you get a temperature for everywhere in the body. For some bodies, that can be a very good approach. And that would be bodies with a low biot number. And that would mean the heat transfer coefficient should be low. The dimensions of the body should be small. And the thermal conductivity should be high. So those three things would ensure that the build number is small. Then the next approach that we can use, an analytical approach, is to look at bodies which are relatively simple. And we did three bodies in paragraph 4.2. And those were a plain wall, a long cylinder, and a sphere. And we've looked at how we can, could derive analytically the temperature distribution inside a body, and we've done that. And then the third part was transient heat conduction in semi-infinite solids. So that is a body where the internal which is so big that the internal temperature do not change. For example, the Earth, but other bodies can also be approached uh, or considered as lump system bodies if we look at just very small changes in time and on the surface or very close to the surface, then we can also use that approach. The last approach that we are busy with is multidimensional systems. Multidimensional is where you make use of the product rule of all the different solutions to generate other types of geometries. And in your textbook there's a table of about 10 or 12 geometries that you can actually solve with the product rule. And that can, for example, generate uh, bodies like a short cylinder, the one that we're going to do now, or uh, let's call it a plain wall, but not infinite, but with infinite length. So those bodies can now also be solved. Right, coming back to the previous lecture, unfortunately we couldn't complete it, so let's start at the beginning of it, and it was based on example 4.8 in the textbook of Sengel and Gujar that we are using. It's not exactly the same problem. I've changed it to so that you can uh, calculate uh, more temperatures on the body. So that specific uh, problem is a short cylinder. The K value is 110. The alpha value is given. And this body is initially at a temperature of 120 degrees Celsius. And then it is taken out in an environment where the temperature is 25 degrees Celsius and the heat transfer coefficient is 60. And it's like that all around the body. That is very important. And the problem that we have to solve is firstly to determine the center temperature after 15 minutes, the temperature there also after 15 minutes and the temperature there at the corner at also 15 minutes. So uh, the solution of short cylinder in terms of if you go and look in, 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 the, in, the, in the table that has been given to you, the solution for a short cylinder is the product of a plain wall and a very long cylinder and that would give the solution for the short cylinder. So how do we solve this? Well, firstly, we start with con considering, let's call it the plain wall part of this problem. So we consider the plain wall. And the plain wall must be, in terms of length, 120 millimeters. So remember this short cylinder is the product of a plain wall going through there and a long cylinder like that. 
Okay. So the two of them together gives you the short cylinder. I've shown you in a, a graph previously that makes it more clear. So let's look first at the plane wall. There's the plane wall. And what we need to look at the plane wall is firstly getting the temperature and I'm going to use different surfaces that I'm going to identify with different colors to make it easier for you. And let's call this line or surface they see. The intersection. Okay. So to get the first part of the problem, it is about getting the center temperature. Okay. So for the plain wall, we, you'll see that tau, and again you will get that from the graph, is equal to alpha t divided by L squared. Okay. Alpha is given as 3.99 multiplied by 10 to the minus 6. The time is 15 minutes, so it is 15 multiplied by 60 divided by L, which is, 0 point, which is 60 millimeters, because 2L is 120, and the result of that is that tau is equal to 8.48. And the build number is equal to the heat transfer coefficient multiplied by L divided by K, and that is equal to the heat transfer coefficient, which is 60, L, which is 60 millimeters, therefore 0 0.06, 0 0.060, divided by the thermal conductivity is 110, and that gives us a value of 0 0.03273. Now remember, the solution, the solution for this plane wall is an equation which says that the non-dimensionalized temperature is the sum of n equal to, from n equal 1 to infinite of a, a n whatever. Okay. That is the correct solution. However, it says that if tau is larger than 0.2 and we see tau is equal to 8.48 then we only have to use the first term therefore it means that the solution for the non-dimensionalized temperature at C take note C okay, indicate on the center line is then equal to only the first term which is A1E to the minus lambda 1 tau multiplied by lambda 1 square multiplied by tau. Okay. Sir? So, yep. Uh, alpha is 33.99. I beg your pardon? Alpha from last time is 33.99. Uh, alpha, oh, 33.99. Is that what you're saying? Oh, okay, sorry. Uh, maybe I made an error the previous time, I can't remember. Uh, oh yes, you're right, 33.9. I think it's 33.9. <laughs> so like that. So previously it was 33.9, let's keep it as 33.9. Uh, Is that right? Okay. So, how do we solve this? Well, you can go and actually solve A1 and lambda. It's very complicated, but these days you can solve it on many computers or you can get it in the table that has been provided in the textbook at this specific build number. So if we go and look at table 4.1, table 4.1, then you'll get that lambda 1 is equal to 0.1799 and A1 is equal to 1.005. Okay. You understand that? So just go and look at this build number 
for the plane wall in the tables or you can go and solve the roots you can get lambda 1 and a1 you all happy with that okay so it means then that the non-dimensionalized temperature which is equal to the temperature at C minus T infinite divided by Ti minus T infinite is equal to A1e to the minus lambda 1 square multiplied by tau. We can do the substitution. T in the center is what we want to get. Okay, minus the environment temperature is 25. Okay. Initially, the body was at a temperature, the cylinder was at a temperature of 120. Minus 25 is equal to A1 is equal to 1.005. E to the minus lambda 0.1. 7 double mind square multiplied by tau and tau is equal to 8.48 you see so therefore the center temperature can be determined as 97.21 degrees celsius but remember this is the center temperature of only a plain wall and that would be a plain wall in an environment, again, where the surroundings is at 25 everywhere. The transfer coefficient is 60. Initially, it was at 120 degrees Celsius. And now it was allowed to cool for a period of 15 minutes. So that would be the temperature on the center line. Okay. Now that we've got this, let's just go and calculate that non-dimensionalized temperature because we are going to... Uh, use it later on that would be 97.21 minus 25 divided by 120 minus 25 and that is equal to 0.76 does that make sense ladies and gentlemen are you happy with that simple okay so the next part is now the long cylinder. Okay, so the long cylinder is like that. If we look at the sketch, we will see that that is equal to R, that is equal to R0. So in our case, R0 would be equal to 50 millimeters. Are you happy with that? Because the diameter is 100. So the radius R0 is equal to 50 millimeters. And what we are interested in this case now is to get the, center, the temperature also at the center. And in this case, I'm going to use the S to indicate on that center line, S. <coughs> right, now take note. Let's calculate the non-dimensionalized time. Would it be the same as the, with that one? You see the answer is no. The non-dimensionalized time depends on the geometry. It's not the same. So the non-dimensionalized time is equal to alpha t divided by r0 squared. Where do I get this from? From the solution where the non-dimensionalized time and the build number are defined. You don't have to remember it. Okay. Now, to save time, I'm not going to put in the values because it's very simple. I hope you agree with me. Alpha is 33.9 multiplied by 10 to the minus 6. Time is 15 minutes, so it's 15 multiplied by 60 divided by the radius, which is equal to 0 0.050 squared. Okay. And if you go and calculate it, it would be equal to 12.2. So, again, tau is larger than 0.2. Therefore, in terms of this infinite series, we can only consider the first term. If we do that, then the error would be smaller than 2%, which is fine. Okay, so, so there's tau. We can also go and calculate the build number. 
and the build number is equal to the heat transfer coefficient multiplied by R0 divided by K. The heat transfer coefficient is equal to 60. The radius is equal to 50 millimeters, so it is equal to 0 0.050. K, the thermal conductivity is 110. So the build number in this case is equal to 0.02727. Do not look, look at this and say, oh, right, it is smaller than 0.2. Now I can use the lump system approach. Okay. It's not going to work here. Okay. So with that, we can now also go and look at the solution, and the solution would be now similar to this. So the solution, the non-dimensionalized temperature at S, would be equal to A1E, to the minus lambda 1 squared multiplied by tau. Okay. Where do we get A1 and lambda 1? Again from the solution of the eigenvalues or the solution of A1. You can go and do it numerically on your computer or you can go and get the values from the table given in your textbook, single and gajar. Okay, so what are the values? Well, from table 4.2, I have found the values to be um, 0.2328, uh, that would be, sorry, for lambda 1, and for A1 it would be equal to 1.007. Are you all happy with that? No, you're asleep. <laughs> Maybe because the air conditioning system is not working. What did I do there? That is an error. Have you heard of a Bessel function? Do you remember? With cylinder, there's a Bessel function. Okay. So, what is needed in this solution is um, that there should be added, sorry, I do not have enough uh, space here, but at the end of this term should be added the Bessel function, the first one, zero, multiplied by lambda n, multiplied by r divided by r zero. Okay. okay. Now, in our case, r is equal to zero. Do you agree? Because we want the solution here where the radius is equal to zero. So that would be the Bessel function in zero. It would mean eta is equal to zero, and the result of that term is equal to one. Okay. So if you forgot this term, in this case, it wouldn't have been a train smash. Okay. But for the other solution, it will be. Okay. Now, um, what I would like to do is um, right, let's do it here. Okay, so the non-dimensionalized temperature at S is equal to the temperature at S minus uh, T infinite divided by Ti minus T infinite and that is equal to A1 e to the minus lambda 1 square multiplied by tau multiplied by j0 in 0 which is equal to 1. Okay. And if we solve that then we get the temperature at S minus the environment temperature which is 25 divided by the initial temperature of that body which is 120 minus the environment temperature again which is 25 is equal to A1 which we got from the table is equal to 1.007 E to the minus lambda lambda is equal to minus 0.2328 square multiplied by tau and tau is equal to 12.2 multiplied by 1 and from that we can solve that the temperature at point S is equal to 74.04 74 degrees Celsius. Okay. 74. 
And if we take this term and we put it back in there, then we can solve the non-dimensionalized temperature as 0.5163. Okay, so for both of these, we've got the solution on the center line. Okay, there and there. Okay. Now, would, I'd like to come back to the plain wall and now get the temperature on that surface there. Okay. So for the plain wall, the top surface. So if we look at this plain wall, there it is. Again, 2L is equal to 120. In this case, I would like to solve the temperature on this surface there. And I'm going to identify it as E. And here on the center line, we actually have the previous solution of C, which is on the center line of the plane wall. Okay. So, how do we get the temperature on that surface? Well, again, you have to go and calculate the non-dimensionalized time, okay? And if we can just come back to this plain wall case, okay, if we look at that, nothing changes. Do you see? L is still equal to 60 millimeters. And if you look at the build number, again, nothing changes. You see? So tau and the build number would remain constant. Nothing changes. So tau is still equal to 8.48. The build number is equal to 0 0.03273. And A1 would remain as 0 0.1799. And lambda 1 would be equal to um, 0.1799. Okay? You happy with that? Okay. Now, for this case, if you go and look at the solution, you will see that the temperature at E is now equal to A1 E to the minus lambda 1 square multiplied by tau, but multiplied by the cos of lambda 1. Oh, sorry, let me rather, sorry, let me rather do it like this. The cos of, okay, uh, lambda multiplied by x divided by L. So I think your A1 should be 1.0 This one? Okay, we can just go and correct it later on, right through, okay? Okay, so you see there's an extra term here that we need to take into consideration. And if you look at the sketch, you will see that the x direction is like that for the plane wall. The solution at different values of x. In our case, we want the solution at E, you see. So for us, this term is equal to the cos of lambda multiplied by x, which is 60 millimeters, divided by L, which is also 60 millimeters, and that is cos of lambda. And I think this should actually be lambda 1, like that. Okay. Okay. So, in terms of the non-dimensionalized temperature, which is then equal to Te minus T infinite divided by Ti minus T infinite is equal to everything there, and we've got 
everything. We've got A1, lambda 1, tau, lambda 1. We can get the solution. We've got that temperature is 25, that temperature is 110, that temperature is 25. The only unknown is then the temperature at E, and that would be 96.04 degrees Celsius. Okay, and or theta, the non-dimensionalized temperature at E, is then equal to 0.748. Okay? Now I want to go back to the long cylinder. To the long cylinder on the outside radius where R is equal to R0. So if we go back to the long cylinder like that okay now we want the temperature on this surface here which I'm going to call P okay. and remember this surface here the solution here is S we've already obtained that it is on the center line now this P is of course all around the radius it's not one single point it is all around the radius. Okay. Right, now again I want to go back to the solution for the long cylinder. Okay. Again if we look at tau, all the terms are exactly the same. So tau is still going to be 12.2. The build number, again everything is the same. So the build number stays constant and therefore lambda 1 and A1 are the same. Okay, so nothing changes in that regard. So tau, the build number, A1, and uh, lambda 1 is the same as previous, or the same as, let's call it the case of S. Okay. The only thing that changes is this extra term where the non-dimensionalized temperature is equal to A1 e to the minus lambda 1 square multiplied by tau multiplied by the Bessel function the first one multiplied by lambda 1 multiplied by R divided by R0 Okay, and again it's going to be J1 multiplied by lambda 1, and lambda 1 is equal to 0.2328, okay, multiplied by the radius, which is 60, divided by 60. So eta is going to be equal to 0.2328, okay, and we can then get the value of J at 0.2328 and that is equal to 0.9875 something like that okay so coming back to the non-dimensionalized temperature so the non-dimensionalized temperature T is minus T infinite divided by T I minus T infinite is equal to A1 multiplied by that long thing, multiplied by the Bessel function zero. Okay. And everything on this side is known. Okay, everything is known. <coughs> known also is that temperature of the environment is 25 and the initial temperature is given as 110. So the only unknown is Ts. And that would then be equal to Mm. I didn't write it down, okay. but the non-dimensionalized temperature, which is actually the one we are looking for, is equal to 0 0.5093. Okay? 
Okay, now if you look at that, you would say, now where are we going? <laughs> where are we going with this? Okay. Yep. Sorry, shouldn't. T-A. Yeah, B. Uh, not yet. Uh, 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 sorry, uh, you mean this one here? Yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry. You mean this P should be S, yes. Okay. Oh, okay, okay, no, sorry. Sorry, yes, sorry. Th yeah, sorry, uh, sorry, sorry. Yes. Temperature P, yeah, sorry. Okay. Okay, so we are tr previously, previously we've solved the temperature there. Now we've solved it there at P. Okay, that's right. Okay. Right, now let's solve the problem. Okay. Let's first start by solving. Uh, I'm going to do it here. Okay. So let's solve the temperature at zero, at the center. Okay. Now, if you go and look at table. 4.5 for the specific case of the short cylinder okay, for the short cylinder then it says that the solution the non-dimensionalized temperature of XRT is equal to the non-dimensionalized solution for a wall at XT multiplied by the non-dimensionalized solution for a cylinder as a function of R and T So it comes from the product solution of all the other solutions for the plane wall, the cylinder and the sphere. <coughs> now we want to get the temperature at zero, the non-dimensionalized temperature at zero and that would be, take note, where x is equal to zero, r would be equal to zero, do you agree, at the time t. That's the solution we, are, we want. And that would be the solution for the wall where x is equal to zero and the solution for the cylinder where r is equal to zero. <coughs> okay, so I'm going to try to make this sketch here. Remember we've got this long cylinder like that. And we've got the plain wall. Okay. And this gives us the solution for the short cylinder. Uh, like that. Okay, there's the short cylinder. Okay. So it says that the solution at this point here is equal to the solution for the plain wall. There's a plain wall. And it would be on that line there, on that center line, multiplied by the solution for the cylinder at the S line. And that would give us the solution in the center. <coughs> you see? Just the multiplication of the two. So the solution at the center is equal to the non-dimensionalized temperature the non-dimensionalized temperature, let's look at this one, for the cylinder multiplied by the non-dimensionalized temperature for the plane wall. Oh, sorry, for, first for the plane wall, there it is, multiplied, so it's 0.76 multiplied by that of the long cylinder. So it is equal to 0.76 multiplied by 0.51 Six, three. and those two terms is the one from C and from S okay there is C and there is S so the result is that the non-dimensionalized temperature is equal to 0.392 okay. now that we've got the non-dimensionalized temperature we can calculate the temperature T0 minus T infinite divided by Ti minus T infinite is equal to 0.392 
that solution. Okay. Temperature at the zero is what we want, minus 25. Initial temperature 110 minus 25 is equal to 0.392. And that would give us the temperature at the center of 62.3 degrees Celsius after 15 minutes. Okay, so it gives us the solution of the two intersects, give us the solution at the center. Okay. Now, let's look at we want to solve, if we come back to the sketch again, <coughs> we come back to the sketch, we want this temperature there. Okay. So that would be the solution of the long cylinder on this line, multiply the solution of the wall, but on this line. Do you see? <coughs> so to solve TS, uh, that we call it now TT at the top. Is that right? Okay. It says that if we okay. if we have the solution along the center line which we have <coughs> multiplied by the solution of the plane wall then we're going to get the temperature at the top. Okay. So therefore, the solution again, if we go and look at this table 4.5, says theta at XRT is equal to the non-dimensionalized solution of the plane wall at XT multiplied by the non-dimensionalized solution of a cylinder at RT. Okay, so the non-dimensionalized temperature at T would then be equal to 0.748 multiplied by 0 0.5163, 0 0.748 is the one, the solution on the E plane multiplied by that of the cylinder which is then equal to S. Okay, let's just look at that one. I think maybe that's important. Let's just look at that one. So we want theta where x is equal to 60 millimeters. Okay. And where r is equal to zero on the center line as a function of t. And that would be the non-dimensionalized solution of a wall where x is equal to uh, 60 millimeters <coughs> multiplied by T and for the cylinder R would be equal to zero T. Those solutions. Okay, and the solution then would be equal to 0 0.386089. Okay. So again, now that we've got the non-dimensionalized temperature the non-dimensionalized temperature is the temperature at point T minus T infinite divided by Ti minus T infinite. The non-dimensionalized temperature we have is equal to 0 0.386089 is equal to the temperature at T minus 25 divided by 110 minus 25 and the result is that the temperature at point T is equal to 61.7 degrees Celsius. Okay. So the second part of the problem has been solved. So the third part would be to solve the temperature at R. Okay, so that is on the outside 
on the outside and the top corner. So again, if we look at the fact that we've got a plain wall and a long cylinder, now we want the temperature there, at that point there. How can we get it? We can get it by getting the solution at P, at the radius, multiplied by the solution at E, the top surface. That intersect is going to give us that solution. So the temperature at point R would be equal to the non-dimensionalized temperature of E multiplied by the non-dimensionalized temperature of P. Again, we can write it out like this. And let's do that. So we want the non-dimensionalized temperature where X is equal to 60 millimeters. Okay. R is equal to 50 millimeters. Okay, so let's look at the sketch. So X is 60 and R is 50. It's a function of time. Is then equal to the non-dimensionalized temperature of a plane wall at X is equal to 60. Multiply that of a cylinder where R is equal to 50. And the result is that the non-dimensionalized temperature at point R is equal to theta E. Okay, where is theta E? Theta E is this one here. You see on that, oh, sorry, on the plane wall, uh, plane wall. Yeah, sorry, this is the plane wall. The plane wall, 0.748. Okay, so it's 0.748. Let's just identify that, as we've done with the, all the others. Okay, so that is the solution at E, multiplied by 0 0.5093, and that would be the solution at P. Okay, and the result is equal to 0 0.288, Now, the non-dimensionalized temperature is equal to that. So TR minus T infinite divided by TI minus T infinite is equal to 0.288. Okay, TR is what we want to determine. Minus that of the environment is 25 divided by the initial temperature of the short cylinder, 110, minus 25 is equal to 0 0.288, from which you can solve that the temperature at point R is equal to 52.4 degrees Celsius on the corner. Any questions, ladies and gentlemen? Yep. Uh, you say somewhere there's a mistake. Theta R, yes. I'm sorry, I cannot hear you. Zero point three eight. Uh, for which term is it? Is it this one? Uh, 0 0.38. Okay. Okay. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, do you understand this problem? Right. Now, we still have five minutes and I'm still going to explain something very important. Okay. Now remember, in the test and exams, you're going to get bodies like this to solve. And sometimes there can be a curveball in it. You have to be very careful. So let's consider the case, the specific case, where we've got exactly the same cylinder. Okay, so we're talking of, what was the diameter? 100. 100, and this length is 120. Let's suppose it was 
on a table or on a surface. The same problem. How would you solve it then? If it's on a surface. Now the first thing that you have to realize is that if you now go and look at your tables, you would see that the short cylinder, like that, okay, the conditions all around it should be the same. In this case, you do not have it. The conditions here are not the same. So let's suppose this is adiabatic. Okay. Does that mean there's no solution for it? The answer is no, because you can actually very easy change this problem so that you can get the same solution. What about if you would now remember in terms of yeah, okay. if you would now go and you would double the length of the cylinder to 240 and you would solve it then what can you use in terms of this specific problem what you can use is symmetry okay. because remember the temperature there and the temperature there is going to be exactly the same there's going to be a zero gradient there and that zero gradient would represent exactly this problem so just by doubling this length to now 240 and then work with L is 240 you can actually solve the, the, uh, uh, the problem you see that? okay and there has been problems like that in previous examples and tests so make sure you understand this concept it is very important it is just symmetry that you're using okay right ladies and gentlemen this is the end of this chapter um, any questions that you would like to ask if not, thank you very much and enjoy the rest of your day.